Yeah, so hi, I'm Ellen Adarna and um, before the program, I was uh, diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and um, post-traumatic stress disorder. And um, the reason why these things happened to me was because of the death of my father. Um, I had unhealthy relationships and I just had gave birth at the time and all these things happened together all at one time so it was really a recipe for those issues and problems okay so emotionally at that time I was um, I didn't know who I was anymore um, having lost an anchor in the family um, and with all the changes that came along with motherhood, I, I, I lost myself. I, I lost my identity. I didn't know who I was. I was very confused. And um, it basically broke down. I lost my confidence. I lost the trust I had in myself way back when I was younger, which I was, I considered myself a very strong person. And those things I lost. It was like back to zero. With my health, I didn't really experience a lot of, um, you know, like getting sick or having fever and stuff like that. I, I was okay. But I think it manifested, um, I would just be puking out of the blue uncontrollably having panic attacks, not knowing what is going on with me, what's going on with my body. Um, I would just be shaking. And that was my first time to experience those. So, you know, when you feel like you don't know what's happening with you. And plus, with the sudden death of my dad. So I thought that Every time I had those attacks, automatically my mind would just go to the pattern where I'm going to die because my dad died suddenly and I'm going to die. And plus with the hormones and stuff like that. So yeah, it really went into a downward spiral. That was my health, my condition at that time. So uh, during my depressive state, I remember I was um, sleeping a lot. I was always tired, even if I was, wasn't doing anything. Oh, well, I was also taking care of my son, but that time felt like a blur because I most of what I remember was just that I was always tired and sleeping. And it felt so sad because even when my son was there, he was the one that I really wanted in life. I, I knew that I always wanted a kid, a child, but every time I look at him, I'd even be more depressed because what is this? Why do I feel like this? Is, is this what I'm supposed to feel like? Is this what motherhood is? I'm tired, I'm sad, I'm grieving. So um, I had a therapist, uh, I had a psychiatrist, and um, the time when I was talking to them, I wasn't taking any medications at that time yet because I was breastfeeding. And um, if you're a mom, if you're a girl, you know how taxing and um, tiring breastfeeding is. It takes a toll on your mind and your body. So, yeah, I... I, I only started taking the medications right after I breastfed um, and I was still counseling but um, so okay I took medications I was on Zaner I was on I had dormicums uh, to knock me out like this is a really strong sleeping pill and um, I was taking Z20 Z20 is for uh, people who are dealing with 
PTSD, which I was. Yeah, but every time I took those pills, I wouldn't feel anything. I wouldn't be sad. I wouldn't be anxious. I wouldn't be nervous. But I wasn't happy. I didn't feel like, you know, oh, every time I take the pill and then boom, I'm happy. No, none of those. It was... I was like a robot. So basically, the pills were just to mask the problems. It wasn't to make it go away. It was just a layer to filter it. So there, and yeah, the, the, the talks helped a bit. It was kind of good to vent out things, to talk to someone, but... Or at that time, I wasn't taking action to... to fix or to go to the bottom of what really cost it. Okay, so I met, um, I, I heard about the program through Samantha Kapunan. She did the program before me. And um, I knew, from what I knew is that she had more or less the same issues that I had. Um, and yeah, by talking to them and some close friends, our, our, our friends, her friends and my friends, she she was better after the program and after she did the program so with me at that time i basically tried everything and i was still feeling shitty so it was like what's there to lose right so i might as well try this so um yeah, that's how I, I, I got into the program. I signed up, and yeah, I didn't expect anything though because <laughs> no one's ever heard. Of, I've never heard of a program like this, right? What is this? It's like just. It felt like it was just physical activities, but I didn't know that you know, using your body is a way to get here. This program, the Kokoro program, is not something you hear of anywhere or you, you don't see them on Instagram. Um, it was just by through word of mouth. The reason, the only reason why I, I jumped into it was because I saw Sam and she was better. So there and um, yes, yeah, so when I, I finally decided to, to, to join, um, the coach to somewhat like interrogate or we had an interview we were in communication a month before I flew in and yeah it was just um, like talking and he was um, studying or examining me or what kind of person or issues I, I, I was having and yeah, the, the communication before the program starts, I, it's very, it's, it's important. So our day, a uh, typical normal day would be like, um, wake up at five. Um, after that, we meditate, um, probably around 20 to 30 minutes, I, I don't know. But it felt like that. Um, and then after the meditations, would be journaling, right? writing stuff, writing affirmations, things that you you tell yourself and you believe. Um, and then after that, we'd be doing some exercises. It would be physical or... It was mostly physical. There was always that physical part. After the exercises would be the discussion. He would explain to you what the purpose of that exercise was. So, of course, you had to do it and then he would explain it to you so you get it. You get what's happening. They just don't make you do stuff and not make you understand and realize its purpose. So, yeah, the discussions theories it was like going to school uh, for me this is where actually most of my learning took place it was through the talking 
it was like therapy and lessons, life lessons. So there, yeah, and then the discussion theories, um, and then lunch break, and then you rest. And then in the afternoon, another exercise. And after the exercise, would be discussions again. And after that, dinner and you're done with your day. So the first exercise I did when I arrived, obviously, was I think the hardest for me. It's called the Japanese dry swimming. Don't stop. Don't stop. You're on the best way. Don't stop it. When I think about it now, it's the hardest for me because I came here in a very bad condition. Yeah, it was the most frustrating thing, exercise. So I was tired and I was complaining and I was feeling all these things. And I guess through that exercise, the first exercise, my teacher was able to point out my weaknesses my problems, what I was dealing with because it was very hard. I was put in a very uncomfortable situation. 